Hey guys, good morning. I um, want to take some time and show you around one of our job sites. We're replacing this roof here in Los Angeles. It's a two-story house with a fairly steep roof. You can see it's got like a 14-12 roof on the second floor and some smaller eyebrows sticking out all around the house. This house is an old craftsman style house. It's probably honestly like a 100, 120 year old house, um, which is pretty common here in uh, Southern California. We have a lot of these older homes in historic neighborhoods, um, which present its challenges. So this is just our job site here. We've got a generator going, our compressors running. Um, they're about three days into this job already. So we've already torn off the old roof, installed new plywood, uh, and pretty much we're doing some prep work here now uh, after replacing the wood prior to the installation of the roofing. Over here we're on the back, it's kind of like a little patio addition they have going so it's a flatter roof. Um, we've installed new OSB sheeting um, all across the roof because the old roof had uh, wood shake so when we, when we tore it off we had to install new OSB. You can see here we've installed the nails. Um, on the edges you should try to be at 6 inches on center then 12 inches on center in the fields. Uh, we've also replaced a lot of the woods on the under eaves um, all around the house because it's again being such, a, such an old house had a lot of woodwork that really needed to be done. Um, this OSB we like to use for a few reasons. It's actually stronger than plywood um, and the other benefit of it is it does not delaminate. So plywood being as layers tends to split up after probably 30-40 years. OSB doesn't have that um, because it's not full layers. We don't have that happening. And over here I want to show you the old roof. So the old wood shake was installed on what was called space sheeting where it was actually like one by fours placed far apart. So anytime you want to install new shingles, you can't install on those one bys. You've got to install all new decking. Plywood's also acceptable. It's kind of like the older way of doing it. OSB is the newer and what we prefer and what shingle manufacturers actually prefer as well. But some people still like using plywood. That's totally fine. Really what matters is that you have a solid deck to work on. Uh, it's nailed properly and you always want to leave a little bit of a joint um, in between the sheets to allow for expansion and contraction. Um, over here on the roof that I'm standing on we're going to be installing this rolled roofing. This is a self-adhered cap sheet roof. The reason we're installing this here as opposed to like a torch down is especially with that old roof that we have there, um, that old wood uh, shingles on the wall that's super flammable so we don't want to have an open flame next to an old wood house like this the risks are way too much so we're gonna be going self-adhered the nice thing is that we have positive drainage a decent slope here so we're gonna be kind of roofing up and up this siding uh, which is easy to do with the self-adhered um, again you can see our nailing patterns here we're going every six inches on center um, at the seams and you want to stagger them. Then on the field you want to do every 12 inches on center. Um, you want to chalk lines there. You can see that red line is a line that we've drawn out. We've snapped the chalk line in order for us to properly hit our nails on those rafters. Um, so that's it. You know we've got the majority of the plywood down already and we're going to be installing the roofing here shortly. And again, when you're installing this OSB, um, feel comfortable to leave a slight gap in between those um, sheets to allow for expansion and contraction. You want to leave like a one eighth gap in between them. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the other roof. One thing I want to show you here that um, I highly recommend is fastening your ladders down. Um, one thing that happens a lot is ladders can slide off a roof when you're getting on and off. And anytime you strap it down, it really helps safety. Uh, so here's our first layers of layer of base sheet. Um, this is a certainty self-adhered roof. Uh, being that it's a smaller roof, we're adhering straight onto the deck. 
which is acceptable for small roofs. Um, anything under generally seven eight hundred square feet, it's uh, acceptable. Uh, anytime you go larger, you want to um, go out with a glass base first. Um, again, that's for expansion and contraction. Now we're going to be using metal round cap nails. Those are the nails that we're going to be using to fasten this first base layer down. You can see that these rolls have a real nice marking of end laps and side laps. So you, we always like to overlap three inches instead of two, just to allow a little bit better of uh, overlap and waterproofing. When we're doing these kind of roofs, uh, flat roofs really, you wanna make sure you spend all your time, attention, and detail there. Um, shingle roofs tend to be a lot easier to work on, but uh, flat roofs, um, are definitely a little bit more uh, difficult and require a little bit more attention to detail. So you can see here we're at an end lap uh, where two ends are meeting. Now the manufacturer actually calls, I believe for an eight inch uh, overlap at the ends. We like to go more. So we like to do like a minimum of 12 to 14 inches. Um, it doesn't hurt to go more. You're just wasting a little bit of material. You're using a little bit of extra material, but that's definitely not a concern. Um, it's such a small, cost that it's always better to go more at your end laps um, now before you roll these out you want to make sure that you align them properly so we start off at the end roll it out make sure that that edge is nice and even because these things are so sticky that once you remove that film and you release that adhesive backer um, you're gonna have a real difficult time realigning it. It's almost impossible. So you wanna cut it to size, align it, hold it in place before you start adhering. Um, you can see all you have to do is just pull that uh, film strip off, that release film from the bottom while it's in place already. So um, over here I wanna show you uh, the shingle roof that we're going to be starting installing. Now we've got our underlayment installed. One important thing to always remember for underlayment when it comes to the eaves, you want to install your underlayment on top of your drip edge. Um, you, you can see we've got our ice and water shield. So this is the same, pretty much the same material, the base layer that was going on our flat roof. We're using as our ice and water shield in the valleys. And what this does is really protects those vulnerable areas of the roof. Valleys are one of the areas that tend to leak the most. So we always like to install that self-adhered membrane along those valleys underneath our underlayment. Um, for our underlayment, we're just fastening them using metal round cap nails. Um, nailing and fastening patterns on underlayment is not as important as other areas of the roof. Um, we've loose nailed this in, we still have to put some nails in. But pretty much you're just temporarily keeping the underlayment down until you install the shingles. Once you have the shingles installed, you're already putting hundreds of nails in and that underlayment's being held down by the shingles. Really, you wanna make sure you have enough nails on the underlayment where it does not slip and also it doesn't blow off at night. Um, we tend to install our underlayment and install our shingles right away, so that's not a huge concern for us. Um, so yeah, just uh, make sure you install your underlayment correctly. Make sure you're fastening down enough where you're wor you can work on it safely. This is a steeper roof, so you wanna make sure that it's not slipping out from underneath your feet. Um, the underlayment does have markings to install fasteners, so those are good guidance tools as you're installing it to go across the roof. Um, now, again, Fastening your ladders down is super important, especially when you have a gutter. Because anytime you have a gutter, that gutter acts like a almost a slide for that ladder to slide left and right. And getting on and off a roof is one of the most dangerous parts of actual roofing. Because um, that's when the ladder can slip out. Um, so always just make sure to fasten those down. Uh, fasten your ladders down. Whether you use like a professional strap or anything like that, um, doesn't really matter. The important thing is that it's actually strapped down with a rope or something like that nature. You can see here we've got those orange markings down. 
those are just our locations that we're going to be installing our vents. Uh, so we mark them out from now so we can cut our um, in, uh, underlayment as well as the, the new OSB we have installed um, prior to installing the shingles. We personally like installing the ice and water shield or the self-adhered underlayment underneath the valleys as opposed to installing it on top of your underlayment. It can be done both ways. Um, doing it this way makes it a little bit harder for roofing in the future because the ice and water shield sticks very tightly to the plywood. But since we're not doing the entire roof, that's not a huge concern for us. It's just the valleys. So uh, really, you know, whenever... Um, down the future is probably going to be a new owner and whenever it comes time to replace that roof um, they can just you know go over that ice and water shield now when installing underlayment in areas like this in a valley you want to make sure that your la your larger flatter slope goes on first then you're installing your underlayment um, on your steeper slope because you can imagine the water coming down that slope you want it to go on top of the flatter slope. That's why you can see here on that area, we hadn't installed underlayment yet. We've installed it on the sides running up. Then we're gonna be installing it on the steeper slope. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, thanks for watching.